young fighters that come out of the sticks, like in the US or out here in Australia, we have a lot of guys come out of the sticks and they, they see these guys in the lights and think, oh, this guy's earning millions of dollars, I'm gonna get that, and then... It's, it's a total <laughs> farce and all they're selling you is the dream, but the thing is, in reality, when you come there and you're sitting, like I said, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of fans hit me up and say, oh man, I wanna be the best fighter. I've had over a thousand street fights. You sure it's not 10,000 street fights? You know, they, they always come with these stories. Like, <laughs> like hey man, what about 10,001, you know? They come with these stories and I said, oh, okay, have you had one actual fight? I understand they try to make the connection, but there's no connection with, with street fighting and actual being a martial artist. The martial artist is like a guy that goes, oh, you get up every day, get your, your ass in the gym, bust your ass in the gym every day. One's a profession. You know? And you get, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, you know, you, you gotta take your heads off for the guys that go to work with It's not an easy thing to do. And being a martial artist is the same thing. So I tell these guys, just have about five fights before you throw all your eggs in one basket. Because 5% will make it. 95% will fall to the wayside. Uh, and I was talking, I've, I've spoken to Fab about this a lot of time, and it's not, it's like the fighting part, as hard as it is, like being in the octagon and it's trading, the best, that's the, the easiest. That's the easiest it's part. The easiest like you're, part. you're there, you're barely even thinking, you're just doing what comes naturally to you. It's all the crap around it. It's the lead up, the the people trying to get in the ear weeks out. It's all the training you got to do to get in. That's the hard part. That's what separates us that's, from street fighters. Can you well, that's, speak? that's the champ of the world here talking right there. <laughs> You heard that, that's exactly right. You know? Can you speak on that, Rob, a little bit about like, because you're a young guy, you're 27 years old, and the mm. transition between, I mean, your background, which you didn't come from money or anything. Mm. Actually, the, there was a rumor when, when <laughs> you, know, you know when I had the wrestling school, you know when I had the grappling school in Miller? Yeah. And he was like coming up and people go, you should get Rob to, to train with you. And I, I was like, man, the gym's here, you can train if he wants to, doesn't have to, I don't care. And he was, you would have been 18, 19, and they go to me, you know, his dad is super rich. He uh, lives on the waterfront in Menai and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, who cares, you know? But he, he did live in Menai. He did live in Menai, but we live in housing commission. <laughs> like, still live there. <laughs> so it wasn't wrong with the housing commission, man. <laughs> no, true. but, but it, wasn't, it wasn't the rumor that they Very said. Very different rumor. <laughs> People um, always make the, shit up. The story, like, so for example, so you come from that kind of background as well. And then you went from that to now you're the champion of the world at 27 years old. Can you, how do you mitigate these, all the stuff that Mark was talking about? I guess both of you in different perspectives because you you were same age, you were world champion. Yeah, but that, I started late though. The thing is, I was world champion at your age, the same as you, yeah. but a different sport. But I think the thing is, um, I didn't have a good team around me. You do. I was going to mention a good team that. Just yeah. I, go, I, think, I think you got you had it really hard because I. Fortunate enough for me, I've been blessed with a bunch of dudes that have surrendered, like uh, that I have around me yeah. that genuinely look after me. That's what's important, right? You just mentioned that you know, yeah, champion of the world just said you got to have a good team to help you. That's what's really important. The difference here is he's met a group of guys that help him with everything. Well, there's, there's two mm. there's two different guys, and then they across all the fighters is there's, there's the one guy that wants to help you to help himself, and then there's the other guy that wants to help you because I like you because you're my friend. Because he doesn't need money or you yeah, yeah. meet those guys. I don't yeah. want you to do good. And yeah. and the separation between those two is massive because when, when one's doing well, everyone's his mate, everyone's there. And it's like, yeah, we Friends got you always here. Ringing. Yeah, 100%. And then, <clears throat> and then you have, you have three back to, uh, three, uh, two back-to-back -back fights. I've been there, like you've been there, where like literally the next fight is like you not having a job anymore. And all of a sudden, there's, there's no more phone calls. There's no more friends. Yep. Everyone's pointing the finger. How saying, quick does that happen, Rob? Over, overnight. Overnight. Is it, I, was it that bad I, for you as well, I kid you not, I lost my second fight in a row and I stopped. I didn't get a single message, not a single email. That, but from, that's literally that quick? From my team, from my manager, nothing. No replies, nothing. Like overnight. That was against Thompson? Thompson. After I lost that fight, I just, everyone just stopped, stopped contact. And that's when I, start, I sat back down and I, I reassessed everything yeah. and had to put everything back together because I was spending too much time overseas and had to fix it all. And that's, that's, that's the, that was like the slow progression back upwards. Nice.